Hello everyone and welcome. Today I have a video that most of you have probably been waiting for for a very long time and that is video playback in GameMaker. So this is just a simple demo project that I threw together to hopefully help you guys figure out these new uh, video functions in GameMaker. They're, they're really simple. But the, these came with an update that pretty much just renamed everything, uh, renamed a bunch of stuff, including the entire program. It went back to Game Maker. But anyway, let's get into this. So I have a couple rooms here. The first room, I just have the video object. And in the second room, this is a video end object. <coughs> So, in the first video object, in the create event, we just need to open the video using the video open function. And uh, I'm I'm pretty sure you can supply a URL into here. Uh, we'll try it after I show you this, hopefully. But um, yeah, you just open the video, and you can only play one video at a time, unfortunately. But I mean, hey. That works for me. Probably works for most of you guys too. So uh, then we can go ahead and look at the draw event because the way these are drawn is quite different. Let me just move this down a little. Um, so when you draw, you can't. I mean, you could just say video draw, but it it probably won't work. Um, it returns an array containing video data um, and the status of the video is the first uh, element of that array and the second element of that array is going to be the surface uh, the surface data so we say if video status is zero and zero indicates that the video is playing correctly then we just create a temporary variable called video surface and we grab that surface from the second element of the array and we just draw it. Uh, I draw it at coordinates zero zero. But there's there's a lot more that you can do with these functions. Uh, you can look at the manual for a full list of the video functions but uh, just a few examples here. I have um, a mute button this is just drawing it, uh, checking if we're within the rectangle of the button, and so, so on and so forth. Um, but if we press the left mouse button, we can say video get volume to get the current volume of the video in milliseconds, and this is between, or not milliseconds, in, in a format that's between 0 and 1. So we can say if the video volume is less than 1, then set it to one, uh, but otherwise we can set it to zero. So this is kind of like a toggle mute button. Uh, and then down here, lastly, I just have um, drawing the the current duration and position of the video in milliseconds. But you, you these functions return them in milliseconds, so you can divide by a thousand to get a second. So you can say video length is video get duration and then the current position that you're at of the video is used video get position. And then I just draw that out. And you might be wondering, well, how do I how do I check if a video's ended so I can go to another room or you know, perform a certain action and first and foremost get rid of the video from the screen um, and that's handled through the async social event and within here uh, you can get the current stage of the video uh, using async load and getting the type and there are two stages well I mean there's more but I guess you wouldn't really wouldn't really use them uh, the two cases that are most important are video start and video end and when the video starts, that means 
that the video has come out of this preparing phase and is is beginning to play so you can do something when the video starts as well uh, but when the video ends you want to make sure you close the video so you free it from memory and I just go to the second room and I also have a destroy event here that we just close the video so we make sure we don't have any memory leaks or anything so I can go ahead and show you what this looks like so you can see here we have the duration up in the corner and here if I press mute hopefully this isn't too loud uh, we will toggle the mute Yeah, you guys get the idea. So now I'm going to skip forward to when the video is about to end. So you can see that those async calls work correctly. And we go to the second room, which should just say that the video has ended. So here you can see that the async calls have worked correctly. And it says that the video has ended. Hopefully this tutorial has helped some of you guys. Um, this is a really cool feature. I've been looking forward to it. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys make with it. So hopefully this helped some of you guys. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.